Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. Annie Laurie and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly TV talk show. Free Thought Matters caters to the 26% of the U.S. population that identifies as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular. If you're a non-believer, concerned about protecting the separation between church and state, please join us today at FFRF.org or ask for a sample of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. And whatever your views, we invite you to enjoy this interview of the liberal redneck atheist and comedian Trey Crowder. Trey Crowder is author of Liberal Redneck Manifesto, Dragon Dixie Out of the Dark. Trey received an award at FFRF's 2019 National Convention and was interviewed there by guest host Andrew Seidel. So Trey. Hey. You are a godless heathen. Yeah. An atheist. Uh-huh. And you grew up in Tennessee. Yeah, rural Tennessee. So how did that happen? Okay. It's a little bit of a long story, but the short version is I have a gay uncle who I actually love, you know? So, <laughs> As one does with their yeah, family. Right. Uh -huh. So my uncle, my, I was mostly raised by my dad, pretty much. My mom and dad got divorced when I was younger. My dad mostly raised me, uh, and he only had one sibling, his younger brother, my Uncle Tim, and my Uncle Tim was gay. I didn't know that uh, until I was about nine or ten. My dad explained to me because he knew I was going to probably start hearing things at sure. school and whatnot. And up until that point, I was still going to church some with like my mom's side of the family. Okay. My dad didn't really go to church even when I was a kid, probably for you know that very reason. <laughs> but he sat me down and explained what that means, and that's also when I first found out what gay even was or meant in the first place, you know. And uh, at ten years old, I didn't I didn't care at all. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. It didn't uh, impact me at all. But after that, when I would go back to church, or, you know, with my aunts or whatever, I started picking up on things that had otherwise flown over my head, you know, about homosexuality sermons, yeah. being an abomination, that type of <laughs> stuff. You know, it's like a big part of their whole oh, deal. Yeah. Like they really, that's one of their favorite, that's like one of their greatest hits you know, <laughs> in the deep south is ragging on the gays. And so uh, I started noticing that and I, you know, didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable. I told my dad that I didn't want to go anymore. And of course my dad was just like, hell yeah, turn the Skinner back up. You know, he didn't care because <laughs> he hadn't been going anyway. And so I stopped going at like, 10 ish and I, you know that's pretty young like I can remember going to church some but like I pretty much grew up a, a religious or as a religious as somebody can from where I'm from but I had to deal with it a lot still because obviously I was surrounded by a bunch of people who were not that and I've always been one to uh, run my mouth so like <laughs> I didn't get in, like fist fights or nothing like that but I had a lot of arguments and stuff all throughout high school with the you know Christian kids that I went to school with who would you know try to debate me on that type of stuff sure. so I was pretty aware of it still but I didn't really grow up like immersed in it at all for that reason so you got a gay uncle Christianity yeah. loves to hate the gays yes and especially from where I'm from and that kind of pushed you away from it yes do very you, much do you think that's happening with other people across this I mean it seems to be there's like an exodus from the Christian church right now and it's happening everywhere uh yeah I mean I definitely think that People, I'm a, I'm like kind of an old millennial, you know, like I'm one of the, yeah, I'm like <laughs> one of the elders of the millennial generation, and I definitely think people of my generation and younger are not really down with all that, mm -hmm. generally speaking. So I think that my, my personal story with religion is probably uh, fairly common with people of my age or younger. You know, and, they find and that. even in the South, you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, I like, I'm trying to think of, I mean, yeah, it. It wasn't, you know, a gay uncle or whatever, but I have, uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. One of the guys that tours with me is another, like, liberal redneck dude. They both are, but <laughs> one of them in particular, Corey Forrester, he had a moment kind of like that where his church that he went to growing up, they started uh, 
they want they told all their uh, their flock to boycott Disney and everything Disney did <laughs> because Disney had hosted their first ever like gay pride parade at Disney World or something which of course is like a huge thing now that they yeah. do all the time but it had just happened in the 90s and so his church told him to boycott everything Disney all Disney movies and all that and that was the first time that he had the thought of like oh, something ain't right about all this you know so I, yeah I do think that kind of thing happens a lot it's kind of not a great idea to pick a fight with Disney I no think. yeah yeah, you're gonna lose. Thing, yeah. And he said his his uh he said that he went to his uh, preacher and some of the other like I don't know deacons or well, I'm not good with the terminology but like the other old dudes in the church. Yeah, who cares about? The and terminology. asked him like, uh, are you gonna so are you gonna stop watching ESPN then? You gonna stop watching Monday Night Football, Sports Center, or whatever? You know? And they're like, well, why would we do that? And he's you know because that's owned by Disney. Mm -hmm. you know, well, Shut up, you know, <laughs> pretty much. And so that was his first, like, entree into uh, doubt, I guess, was based kind of on a similar thing. And so this is kind of like your brand now. You're the li liberal redneck. Yeah. You and Drew and Corey, and you're, you're pro-choice, you're pro-equality, mm -hmm. uh, you're anti-racism, and you're doing this all with a southern accent. Right. And I, I think that really throws a lot of people off. Yeah. It's also what makes it so great. It, this is deliberate. Yeah, oh yeah, very, I mean like on the one hand, I, it's definitely not uh, contrived on my part, sure. meaning that like it's all very, it comes from a very authentic place. I mean, I grew up in a tiny town in Tennessee. This is my real accent. This My accent actually used to be way thicker like before <laughs> I left that town. It's actually, you know, lessened some, <laughs> believe it or not. But like, and I've always, because of the thing with my uncle and the church and all that, I've always been, ever since I've been politically inclined at all, I've been, you know, I've leaned left. So it all comes from a very real place. But also I've always been kind of aware of the fact that it's like a bit of a novelty or can be like uh, disarming in a good way to certain mm -hmm. people. Like I was very aware that they would hear my accent and expect me to think and believe a different thing than I did, which I thought, you know, could be used to your advantage, you know. So, I mean, it's... And, well, is that one of your goals, though? I mean, you're hilarious and you're... It's, I laugh out loud when I watch your videos, but is it also... Are you trying to tear down those kind of prejudices at the same time? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I try not to talk about, like, my, you know, like, having a mission or <laughs> sure, anything. Sure, sure, sure. But, like... But, yes, I mean, in so much as I do have one, it's... That's the bigger one is... Uh, showing people a different side of the South or whatever. Because people, I, I get asked a lot, like, how often have you talked to someone whose mind you have changed about something? And almost always, the person asking me the question, what they mean is, how often have you talked to, like, a more stereotypical redneck dude and, you know, changed his mind on mm -hmm. abortion or whatever? And the honest answer to that question is, not often. <laughs> like, that hasn't happened all that much, sure. frankly. But what has happened a lot is sort of the inverse, which is met a person in Portland, Oregon or whatever came to one of my shows and told me that before they found out about me or saw my videos or whatever. They didn't know. They literally didn't know that people like me even existed. Like they thought that the South, that white Southerners in particular were mostly one thing, you know. And there is that prejudice out there. And you're, you, there was a great video where you talked about, I think the statistics, you said, look, like 40% right. of the South is going to vote for the liberal candidate in any election. Right. And it's just that the whole, right. if you look at the electoral map, the whole South is just a swath of Red, mm -hmm. But in any given state, it's somewhere between, you know, 40 to 45 or more, but still a minority of people who vote blue. But if you take the entire South and 40 some odd percent of every southern state, I mean, that's millions of people who vote the other way in every election. And it's not it's not just the black people either. Like sometimes people think that that mostly represents the black vote sure. in the South. Uh, and that's a huge part of it. But still, it doesn't make up the entirety of it. There are plenty of, you know, people who look and sound like me who vote that way also. You just don't realize it if you're not there. Do you think that being liberal and having those views in uh, being outnumbered is that kind of one of the things that pushed you into comedy? Did you just always want to do comedy? How did you get your start? I know you, you did some open mic nights, I think. Yeah, I, I started pretty traditionally as far as that goes. I just started going to open mic nights in 2010. Because you like to run your mouth. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, that's so, like, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but, I mean, you asked if it sort of pushed me into comedy, and I guess it kind of did because, like I said, I like to run my mouth. I was always having these, like, arguments uh, with other guys I went to school with and everything, and, like, I was always kind of like a, a funny kid in class or whatever, which I think always helped 
me not get punched in the face <laughs> or whatever with that type of thing. I didn't think about it that way at the time, but I'm sure that was a factor. And so that probably does have a lot to do with why it uh, appealed to me. The like catalyst though was just I, with my dad one night when it aired on HBO for the first time. We watched uh, Chris Rock Bigger and Blacker. Oh yeah, 1998. I was 12 years old. That was that was like the spark that made me go in my you head. Said, I like, want to do that. I, I want to do that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a that was a very fun one. I remember. Oh that yeah, one too. classic. And your first liberal redneck video, I remember seeing it when it went viral. So this is you with your cell phone, mm -hmm. and you're on your back porch. Mm -hmm. Was it in Was it in Tennessee? Was yeah, it? East Tennessee. Yeah. And this I was in Knoxville. It was the it was the trans bathrooms. Technically. That, that, the transgender bathroom video, which is the one that went crazy viral and is mm -hmm. the first one most people saw, that was Not technically the, first the one. second okay. one. The first one was actually uh, more up y'all's alley because it was about, <laughs> the first one had to do with the state of Tennessee where I'm from at that time. Thankfully, this did not happen, but at that time, they had this like state level resolution to officially designate the Holy Bible as the official state yeah. book of the state of Tennessee. I remember that. I, and so <laughs> the first, vi first Liberal Redneck video was about that and the premise of it was basically just like, oh, y'all going like, you care about books now? That's <laughs> 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 when you care about books. You know how much I got made fun of for reading books as a kid? And that one, that one got like 70,000 views or something, the very first one, and I was over the moon about that. I was thrilled. And then like the next week, I made the second one, which was the transgender bathroom one, and that ended up getting finally on Facebook like 30 million views or something like that altogether, something crazy. And set the scene for everybody, because I don't know if everybody remembers this is, it wasn't necessarily the bathroom bill itself. You were pushing back against a pastor, if I recall, yes. who was ranting about it on Facebook. Yes, and it's funny, because like, did this, did, what you're referencing was the catalyst for those videos. So basically, I've been doing stand-up comedy for like six years. I did before, before, before the, that. Okay, okay. And I did a lot of other stuff too, but I had like, I had a bit that I, I called like the liberal redneck bit, which was similar to what the videos were. And I had talked to my other comedian friends of mine about it. Like I've been thinking about making a, like a YouTube series out of that, you know, that bit. And every single one, anytime I brought it up, they would always be like, yeah, you should. That's a really good idea. <laughs> and I just kept not doing it because in my mind, I was like, I got to save up money for a nice camera. I got to learn about lighting and edit. I don't want to look like an amateur, you know? And so it seemed like a barrier to entry. And then what? change that was one day in spring of 2016 I saw this video that was being shared amongst like people I went to high school with like hardcore Christian types that I went to high school with that's how I saw it but it was going viral amongst that community it had like 15 million views and it was a video of some preacher in North Carolina where the transgender bathroom laws were you know happening at that was the fight and it was just him he wasn't even trying to be funny or no jokes anywhere it was literally just him preaching fire and brimstone into his phone in the woods for some reason <laughs> standing by his truck just yelling at his phone about the the horrors of the the perverts in the bathrooms and all this stuff. And when I saw that, it was I was disgusted by it, but I sure. also I, it's like a like a switch flipped or something. I just kind of realized like if this dude is what I'm trying to, you know, satirize or make fun of and he this is exactly it, then like I don't need, I don't to, need to be to fancy. Camera, yeah. I need to I, I I would be better served doing it exactly the way he d does it. Just go out back yell at my phone you know <laughs> and once I had that like notion then it kind of just took off from there so yes I've never had any contact with that guy I can't even remember his name but, Neither I, can I, but that's the way we should keep it. yes I agree but I do hope though kind <laughs> of that like if he is aware of me at all I'm certain he can't stand me and I want him <laughs> to know that like this is all his fault <laughs> or I guess God's fault from his perspective yes. or whatever <laughs> but, yeah. well let's blame it on him let's keep it on him yeah so we are talking with Trey Crowder the liberal redneck and when we get back we're going to talk a little bit about the Bam abortion ban. That okay. was one of, my, one of my favorite videos. All right. So stick around for more Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. I'm Patrick, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. Nine years ago, I saw Dan Barker debate 
uh, Christian apologists uh, at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, they were discussing the resurrection of Jesus and whether or not it was true. At the time, I was Catholic and was very convinced uh, Dan was wrong and that, in fact, the story was true. That debate prompted me uh, to take a course on early Christian literature and, I, in fact, learn more uh, and question my own beliefs. The more I read and the more I learned, the more I came to realize that I was being pretty much intellectually dishonest. Fast forward to nine years later, I'm now an employee at FFRF and uh, work for the vital mission of separation of state and church. I'm proud to be an out-of-the-closet atheist. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. You can find more content by the Freedom From Religion Foundation at our website, ffrf.org. Follow FFRF on Facebook and you'll get notifications about all of our content, including whenever we go live on FFRF's Ask an Atheist. FFRF is also on YouTube, where all of our programs, including this show and our weekly news bites, are available to watch anytime. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the web. Growing up where and how I did, I never thought in a million years I would have to defend being a redneck to anybody. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, most of my life it's been something I've had to apologize for, you know, I like. Because, yeah, I mean, look, yes, clearly, I'm a different kind of redneck, all right? But I still am one. I can't help it. Tyler's rage, man. Love drinking beer, love football, love my truck, love my mama. My mama, y'all, my mama cooks the best crystal meth you ever had in your life. <laughs> oh. So that was Trey Crowder, Morgan Freeman's favorite comedian, Al Gore's buddy. And we are back talking with him on Free Thought Matters. <laughs> So the BAM abortion ban, mm -hmm. the Freedom From Religion Foundation, we actually started in part uh, because women's rights are so tied up in the separation of state and church and yeah. religion taking over our government. Uh, Ann Gaylor was really passionate about that. Didn't think that women's rights could advance until we pushed religion out of our government successfully. I mean, yeah, that makes sense to me. It, it, it really does. I mean, I, what I want to know is how important to you personally are some of these issues, in particular state church separation. I mean, that's what we do. I'm a lawyer who does this for a living, so I really want you to say it's the, you know, the, the most noble project anybody can embark on. But Well, I mean, I, I, you, yeah, you are a hero. <laughs> Thank but you, I, uh, Much appreciate it. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's, I don't know where I would like rank it at, but it's pretty far up there yep. because in my, like in my personal experience, I've always felt like not just abortion, but like so many of those other issues, like political issues or whatever, uh, are sort of intrinsically tied to the church, or at least the current state of the church, particularly in places like where I'm from. So like abortion, but gay rights, and also like even so, like like racism. Like it just it's all it's it just seems like a silver bullet, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. I've always I think we'd be a lot better off if we just didn't have it at all. So I mean, I think it would help a lot. And like. I feel I, I was talking to a guy recently who's a Hispanic dude from California. I was doing his podcast, and his parents were Trump supporters, and he's like a liberal atheist dude. And I was like, we were talking about that yeah. and how that. And I was like, and he 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 said they're very very Christian. And I was like, well, okay, explain this to me. How, he's not like, how do they think that he is? And he the guy said to me, he was like, honestly, it's pretty much just abortion. He was like, the fact that he's like, you know hard on abortion or pro-life or whatever, like that's enough to make him godly it's in these people's issue. eyes or whatever. And I think, so I mean, there's your answer right there. Like it's all very much tied together for well, sure. And, and you talk about this in the video too. I mean, the, the, the ideological gravity around abortion, especially in the South, I mean, I think you meant you can't drive like a couple feet without seeing a billboard. Oh yeah. I mean, how, do you, how did you, were, were you able to escape that? Because it really does seem to be more than any other issue, it is the one that they care about and the one that they push in your face all over down there. I mean, I guess just not Everywhere. being, oh, it's two things I think, actually. And I haven't really even thought about this in, as far as how I write on that particular subject, but. First of all, just the church not being in the church and that being, a, you know, I was one of those, especially as a teenager, I got to a point where like whatever the church thought, I thought the opposite <laughs> pretty much. But also like I think I grew up really, really poor and I had a lot of cousins and stuff, some of which have since died, but who were like 
on drugs and in and out of jail and that type of thing. And like, I, you know, I would see some of them get a girl pregnant or have all, like have multiple kids at 19, 20 years old and like they had no business doing it. And so like that also definitely affected me. There was like a practicality to it to me. It was just like, they, y'all should not be having these babies. So yeah, it's ignoring the billboards then and seeing the reality. Seeing the reality, yeah. right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's, it's really impressive. And now you're, you're out of Tennessee now. Mm -hmm. you've, you've moved to LA. Yeah. Do you feel, do you miss Tennessee? I mean, yeah. do you feel a little bit like you've escaped in a way? Uh, no, I, like I wouldn't term it that way. I've, I said earlier, I, ever since I was 12 years old, I wanted to do stand up comedy. I wanted to be in like show business even before that because my dad had a video store, if you remember what those things were. I video, do remember yeah, those, right? yeah, Blockbuster. Yeah, bygone era. <laughs> uh, but he had one of the Crowder's videos, a single wide trailer that he converted into a video store in Salina, Tennessee. And I grew up in that thing, so like, I kind of have always wanted to go to LA and do like the Hollywood thing, like ever since I was mm -hmm. a little kid. So like, for that reason, I'm kind of like, you know, living the dream or whatever, but I don't, I still miss Tennessee and I like going back to Tennessee and, and all that type of thing. You know? and, and Salina is in Coffee County? Clay County. Clay County? Yeah. Where's Coffee County near you? Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I know that, I, I, get, I, I can't remember for sure. You had, there's a crazy DA out of Coffee County that you did a video about, a guy named Craig Northcutt. He was the Oh, one. yes, that's uh, that's um, uh, McMinnville, I believe, which is like... Where Bonnaroo is. Yes, where Bonnaroo is. It's like three counties to the... Three counties south of me. So roughly. near, not your DA. No, no. But no. A, a nearby DA. Yeah, yeah. And you did another re really great video about this guy because this is this is the guy who's saying, uh, gay couples in my district. If you're married, I'm not going to prosecute any domestic violence against you because God doesn't recognize the mar your marriage. There's no. There's no domestic relationship for abuse to exist within, yeah. in his eyes, because in, in his God's eyes. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, FFRF actually, we got an investigation going against him. Good. Yeah. The, he, hopefully, the bar is gonna gonna bounce him out. I hope so. Yeah. It's that. It's all like. I think a lot of times our biggest problems in states like Tennessee are guys like that, meaning like the, the not that the higher ups are much better, but like the real troublemakers are oftentimes the like more small time yeah. uh, government uh, officials or legislators like that dude because like I feel like a lot of times they like want to make a name for themselves and the best way to 100%. do that is to do some crazy extreme far right thing and you know make that their like platform and it's just bad for everybody so it is well it's, it's that mentality it's kind of I think of it as like the DMV mentality they have this little bit of power right and they're gonna wield it as best they can however they can but yeah. then you but then you get the, the the Kim Davis types right but then they turn around and they claim perse Christian persecution yeah you got any thoughts on that? How would you define that for real? <laughs> Does I mean, it exist in America? No, yeah, I wouldn't define it because I think it's absurd. I mean, uh, that's the thing. It's like they yell about free speech until you say something that they don't like, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're being persecuted, and you know you're not respecting their beliefs or whatever. Like they have that, and I'm not the first person to say this, but they like they seem to think that freedom of speech is the same thing as freedom from like consequences for yep. what you say mm -hmm. you know and they don't see it that way and uh, because anytime you suggest that they ought that they shouldn't be allowed to like force their beliefs and opinions on everybody else then that means you're persecuting them which is of course ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and you touch on this in your book liberal redneck manifesto uh -huh. subtitles dragon dixie out of the dark uh -huh. and i need you to help me with this because we get <laughs> three thousand state church complaints a year most of them are in the public schools and it seems like all of them involve football and prayer Okay. How did that happen in the South? How did football and religion and Christianity become so entangled? And what can F what can FFRF do? Can you just solve this problem for us? Is basically what I want. I wish I could, <laughs> but I, I mean, I can remember when I was in like having uh, prayer circles every morning and that type of thing that I wouldn't go to, and they didn't make me go to. But I mean, like they were a thing, and like football, like. I don't, I mean, football is the only thing that can even compete with Jesus in the South in terms of like, you know, prevalence and uh, being put on a pedestal and like they just kind of naturally got intertwined, I think, um, just for because it was the same people who were into both things for so long over generations and they just sort of got wrapped together. But I mean, yeah, it's very much a thing. And you've got a new segment on your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Bubble Bustin'. Yeah. 
and you're watching Fox News, yeah, and commenting on it. Yeah, I don't know how you know how are, how good of an idea. Yeah, that are was. you are you okay? No, it's like <laughs> should we open a, like a GoFundMe for your therapy? Yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> having like long lasting effects on me yet. But it, it I, I I underestimated my own ability to like just kind of laugh it off and not take. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I do I know like, what I'm you a mean. comedian. I'll be able to just make fun of it and it'll be fine. But like it. I underestimated how enraged, genuinely <laughs> enraged that it would make me, or like how incredulous and just flabbergasted by it that I would be. I mean, yeah, it's been a whole thing. All right, so in, we got about a minute left. I wanted to do kind of some rapid fire with you, because there's, there's a lot to love about the South. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of the things you try to do is talk about that a lot. So uh, we'll start off with an easy one, SEC or NFL? Well, I'm a Tennessee fan. We've been terrible for a long time now, so I've been mostly NFL lately. Okay. Not that All the right. Titans are any better. <laughs> uh, favorite booze? Whiskey. Okay. Uh, favorite comedian? Uh, right now, I'm going to give a shout-out to Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show, good buddy of mine. He's from okay. Alabama. He's hilarious. And you've talked about non-religious Southerners going to church just for the food? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've seen, it's mostly like, I grew up from a very, very poor place, and you know, you gotta get your chicken where you can get That's it. That's what I'm man. saying, well, what's the, what's the best <laughs> dish then? Is it the chicken? Is that what you gotta oh, go for? Oh, man, either that or probably the broccoli casserole, cornbread, one of those. Okay, so we got about 10 Banana seconds pudding. left. Banana pudding. Yeah. All right. So tell us what happened to country music in the last 10 seconds. Money. <laughs> that was it? Money okay. happened. There you problem. go. Yeah. Solved that problem, too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trey Crowder, thank you so much for joining us on Free Thought Matters. And thank you for joining us on Free Thought Matters, because Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.